Welcome. In this lecture, we're going to talk, or in this module, we're going to have a series of lectures to talk about how we compete in international markets. That is what makes international competition uniquely different from, addition, from competition within an individual country, within an individual market. How international composition, uh, competition makes the whole strategic problem more complex and more difficult, but also provides some additional options, some additional ways to achieve competitive advantage. Essentially, why companies go and, inter and compete on an international basis is to find, it's not surprisingly, to find some new customers or what we hear a lot on the radio, to achieve lower costs. There are certain markets that can manufacture more cheaply. They might have cheaper labor costs. They may have cheaper materials costs, those sorts of things. And if you achieve an international footprint, you can reduce your costs along many of those dimensions, which can be helpful. There's also, though, the idea that if you do something well, you might as well exploit it in a, as large a market as possible. That's going after your core competencies, if you will. And you might want to be in a foreign market to gain access to some of the resources in that market, specific talents, specific skills, um, or even specific resources, that sort of thing. And also to take risk and spread the risk that you're facing in business across more markets. So when there is a downturn in Europe, for example, you can still make, your, make some returns in the US or China. Or when there's a downturn in the US, you can make returns in China or Africa, South America. So it's a way to balance and spread risk across many marketplaces. So there's a lot of reasons that companies, when it makes sense, start to think about competing on the, nat on the international stage. That makes life more complex because different countries are different, not surprisingly. Um, there are certain advantages for certain industries in some countries versus others. Uh, manufacturing, for example, in some of the Asian countries in, in um, China because of lower manufacturing costs or lower labor costs, but also service industries where you have a more educated workforce, like in Europe and in the U.S., might be uh, more support. There might be more support in that situation. So you have different different skills, different competencies in different locations. You also have different types of value chain advantages if, there have, if you have resources that are, you have excess supply perhaps of manufacturing or mining resources, that sorts of things. Government policies also make a big difference. You could have different tax regimes. We're hearing a lot in the business press about uh, foreign income tax and how the U.S. is disadvantaged because the, the uh, corporate tax rate is higher than the developing, most of the countries in the developing world and that that puts a disadvantage on the U.S. marketplace. There are other kinds of taxes, taxes on energy and the like, that might cause people to locate outside of Europe where energy costs are taxed at a higher rate than in other places in the world, for example. There's also some exchange rate risk. Remember, many exchange, many uh, currency currencies trade on the open market, so they vary in relative value. The dollar is strong right now might be weaker in the future, that sort of thing. You have to decide where, what you, where you're going to be positioned as you go forward vis-a-vis -vis the uh, relative currency rates in different markets and different marketplaces. And you can uh, use that currency risk, as we'll talk about in one of the lectures going forward. You could use an international platform to hedge some of that risk associated with um, different marketplaces and different currencies. And of course, you also can, can um, use the, the different marketplaces to find various kinds of markets. You, can, um, you have to be careful, though, that different markets have different tastes and different cultures. They're each unique in their own way. They have uh, different preferences. So you have, to make, you have to make sure that your international global strategy takes into account these differences as well as, the, um, as, well as, as, as taking advantage of being able to leverage these different markets with a, your, your competencies across a broader base. Sometimes it actually increases cost to enter certain countries where the preferences are different. So those are some of the reasons people expand and some of the, the complexities associated with it. Um, what we're going to do in the very next lecture is we're going to talk about the global value chain and how using the differences that are apparent across the globe can make a multinational or transnational or global company 
more competitive than someone who only operates locally. And that's in the next lecture. We'll see you then.